Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for this tribute to Robin Herman. My name is Neil Parikh, and I am the uh, I'm going to be hosting today's uh, tribute. Uh, we uh, usually produce a three Sunday New York Times read along, uh, eight thirty uh, every Sunday morning. Uh, but we are doing a second show today uh, to honor uh, Robin, uh, who passed away earlier this week. Um, as uh, you can see from the New York Times obit, when hockey teams barred female reporters from men's locker rooms, Robin pushed back, breaking through a barrier and campaigning successfully for equal access for women. We will be joined uh, by uh, Melissa Lutke and uh, Lori Mifflin, who both worked with Robin over the years. Um, Melissa uh, actually sued the Yankees to get access to the clubhouse and is the author of a book in process about her lawsuit against Major League Baseball. Uh, she and Robin both covered the NHL at the same time. Um, and in the obit, uh, Lori uh, tells a story about when she and uh, Robin had sometimes been mistreated by players. Um, and uh, But she had she was undeterred as they strategized about gaining access to more locker rooms on the road. We will certainly ask her about that um, when uh, she joins us. Uh, but first, uh, we just want to share a few pictures of uh, Robin. Uh, some of them were sent by uh, um, uh, her husband, Paul Horwitz. So let's just take a look at some of these uh, pictures uh, before we bring on Melissa and Lori. Robin, as uh, a little girl, um, we have... Uh, um, Let's see, with a trophy she, she won, um, playing hockey, Robin in the newsroom. This is a, a great shot of her in an NHL locker room. One of the uh, many angry letters she received, uh, certainly people were, uh, were not thrilled um, with the uh, um, what she was doing, breaking, uh, breaking those uh, barriers. Uh, an article, her own uh, um, take on uh, equal rights and her access to uh, the NHL locker rooms. Uh, she was also a street reporter um, with a, a Verdi Requiem poster. Some of these are family photographs that Paul Horwitz uh, sent us. So thank you again, Paul, uh, for sharing those uh, with us. Uh, this is a picture of Robin with her family. Um, and uh, this is the day that uh, she and uh, Paul both had front page bylines on at the International Herald Tribune. Uh, so that was certainly um, a great. She was a very proud Princetonian. <clears throat> Excuse me. Princeton Tiger. She wrote for the Princetonian. Um, this is her at a uh, reunion. Um, and this is uh, Robin with Melissa on the left and Jane uh, Levy uh, in the middle. Two, um, uh, two women reporters get the bare facts. Just one of the ways that her work was, uh, you know, shared. Uh, obviously, uh, you can see the, uh, uh, the way that they covered her, her work. Um, in front of a, a, a game board, a listing board uh, for sports. This is her uh, schedule when she covered the uh, um, NHL versus Russia. Um, another headline, sports writer Herman shatters all male barriers. Women's locker room visit stirs up world of pro hockey. Uh, and then this is a nice shot of her in Iceland. We also uh, will see some of Robin's paintings. I know that uh, Melissa has a painting of hers at home, so we'll be sharing that as as well. Um, so this is definitely, and this is a nice, nice picture of Robin and Paul. Uh, so with that, uh, we want to bring in um, uh, our guests, Melissa Lutke and Lori Mifflin, to share some of their uh, remembrances of uh, Robin. Lori, Melissa, thank you so much for joining us. I really uh, appreciate it. Um, Lori, we'll we'll start with you uh, if that's okay. Um, tell us about Robin. Um, I mean, all these years later, what do you remember most about her her work? And um, you know, in general. 
Um, well, thank you. Thank you for having me, Neil and Sri. Um, I think everyone remembers that Robin broke down the barriers uh, by being one of the first two women to go into a men's locker room to report. And But what I remember most is that Robin was one of the best hockey writers on the beat in that time period. And I think that that's really important, partly because women had to prove that they were as good as men in order to keep being hired into these all-male professions, and especially sports writing. There was an assumption that a woman couldn't really know as much about sports as a man. So one of the things, I, I will share personal reminiscences, but I think it's really important to say that one of the great things about Robin was she was a tremendous reporter and a tremendous writer. She was good at both, both those things and she was as good as or better than any man on the beat. Absolutely. Uh, Melissa, um... Following up uh, on, on Lori, your your recollections, kind of your first impression for people who didn't know Robin, uh, you know, certainly people know her by reputation and are hearing about her story. Um, what is it? What would you want people to know um, if they didn't have a chance to work with her, or didn't have a chance to uh, you know be friends with her, to be in her circle? What's the one thing people should know about Robin? She's gutsy, 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 all the way, courageous. Uh, 23, imagine being a 23-year-old woman by yourself. You're in a foreign country. You are reporting. This is long before cell phones. She couldn't pick up a phone and call her editor. She couldn't uh, tweet. You know, she couldn't, uh, you know, contact by text. She was on her own. Um, yes, she was with Marcel St. Cyr as they took that walk, uh, you know, to the locker room that night. And she described it, you know, at the time that uh, she was realizing that as she was walking there, she uh, realized that without that uh, experience of being able to be with the players, all that she had had to make up for in terms of trying to be that incredible writer and reporter that Lori characterized her as. She wrote at that time um, that she was, it was like a cripple regaining the use of a limb. She had a way of taking us both into the games, but also taking us along on her personal, gutsy, courageous journey. And I just want to say, you know, for people who are looking at this and saying, big deal, what's the big deal? You know, she went into a locker room. We're really, you know, celebrate this. Well, wait a minute. That was the story that they wanted to tell at the time. But as she correctly headlined it, it was a story, as her reporter's notebook said in its headline, it was about equal rights in hockey. It was not as the men wanted to portray it, as us invading a private space of men. It was about a team recognizing, a league recognizing, the sports world recognizing that women were there. Women were going to cover this sport. Lori, and, and um, you know, and Robin brought this story to millions of New Yorkers, the story of their hockey teams. We were there and we had to be treated equally. It was up to the leagues to decide if the, if the interviews were going to continue in the locker room. That was their decision. But the main decision that Robin fought for and fought courageously at the age of 23 was for equal rights. So I want that to be really a focus and not so much, you know, we lost control of the story in the 70s. We lost it because mainly there were men telling our story and they wanted to focus on what was gonna happen in the locker room and the privacy, all of those issues. And their stories did not contain that word equal rights. So in tribute to Robin, let's, let's, let's take that word back that she gave us, that struggle for equal rights. Absolutely. Um, I want to also share um, uh, some of what um, Paul Horwitz uh, shared, her husband, on Twitter. I, I would say in addition to the New York Times uh, uh, obit uh, by Richard Sandemir, I thought uh, Paul's uh, Twitter thread was just incredible. I think you both <laughs> saw it. I know he tagged you in um, uh, in the in the piece, but I mean, just to, uh, I mean, great writing, uh, but you can also see the love uh, coming through, waking with a broken heart in the middle of the night, 48 hours after the death of 
my wife of 41 years, um, and he's reflecting everyone's piecing it back together with the um, Association of Women in Sports Media, NHL tributes and memories. But he added some things that people didn't know about, um, that as a kid, she watched tons of sports. And uh, when some boys barred her from a neighborhood game, she popped the ringleader in the schnoz <laughs> and later got a private at girl from her mother. Um, that's the Robin you knew, right? Who yeah. would uh, pop yeah. someone if they needed it. Um, and uh, this is that that picture in front of the, the board. Uh, she wasn't related to anyone at the Herman Sporting Goods chain, but someone assumed she was <laughs> and thought she that he was uh, marrying into money. Um, <laughs> when they announced their engagement. Uh, yeah. um, there's a, she was wearing a red Diane von Furstenberg wraparound dress when he first noticed her. And uh, she, he thought her necklace was a crucifix uh, and asked her out anyway. She's, she was Jewish. Uh, they messaged each other secretly using the aliases Boris and Natasha. Did you know about this uh, at the time? I think it Lori? was secret. <laughs> It was secret and they, they didn't, when, when, how long did they keep their relationship uh, under wraps? Neil, I don't, I don't really know. Um, oh, you don't? That's that. I mean, as Paul said, that was secret. That was their uh, <laughs> it was an intra office romance, yeah. but sure. they, were, they were a great couple without a doubt. Yeah. Sure. She was a union girl, supported the newspaper guild, which was great. Uh, she also covered uh, fires and AIDS and, and gold madness in the Diamond District and the Iran hostages hostage crisis. Uh, and uh, she wrote for the Metro Day column. I mean, she had a really uh, wide career. Um, and this is just a great thread. I certainly encourage people to, to check it out. Uh, you can, uh, Paul Horwitz, at Paul Horwitz on, on Twitter. Um, Neil? Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the, he pronounces it Horvitz. It's a V. Hor, 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 Horvitz. Horvitz with a V. Horvitz. Horvitz. Yep. My apologies. V as in victory. V as in victory. Got it. Horvitz. Horvitz. I'll work on that. In um, Verdi. And in Verdi. And they were, <laughs> v as in Verdi. Yeah, good. And in Verdi. And Melissa. And they were married for 41 years. Yeah. 41 years. Absolutely. Uh, they lived in uh, Paris for a while, right? In uh, Yeah. In, in France? Yes, uh, Paul was working I, as an editor for the International Herald Tribune, and they made lots of friends there, as they did everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, what? So, in in the time that you were uh, writing, um, you know, with her covering covering sports, um, to now, I, have you seen that evolution in terms of the way women have been treated? How much progress have we made since uh, you know these barriers had to be broken since? You know, you had to uh, bust open the Yankees locker room. Uh, she worked working with the NHL, et cetera. What kind of progress have we made since then? Well, let's let let's let Robin's words uh, guide us in this one, because again, she was gutsy and she was prescient and she let her opinions be known. She uh, she used her blog at one point to uh, admonish the NFL and um, other other leagues at the same time by saying, "Wait a minute." You know, you've got a lot of these women out there. You've got them on the sideline. They're freezing. They get about four minutes each game to say something. We're, you know, let's get them up in the booth. Where? Why aren't women in the booth? She asked that question. And she asked it with not, not in a, you know, at all laughable way. She was quite serious. We have stalled. We are not making the progress that we need. So again, that gutsiness came out. She made the call. And, you know, lo and behold, there were some people listening because there are now women in the broadcast booth. Not enough. We're still at the level of first. We got to get to second. Robin would be the first one to say we got to get to second, third, and fourth. So I'm going to turn back to Lori. But you know, we got to be guided here by Robin because Robin, Robin, Robin gave us a lot of leads that we now have to kind of pick up the thread and carry for her because. Um, She's, she just led the way all the way, not just at the age of 23. So, Lori, your thoughts? Well, let's remember, this is almost 50 years ago. So mm -hmm. one would hope we'd have made some progress in 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
And we have. I mean, Ra uh, Melissa is absolutely right that it's not far enough and more could be done, but it's no longer unusual for a newspaper to have a woman sports writer, a woman sports editor even. It's no longer unusual to see women in bro in broadcasting broadcasting um, sports. There's In soccer now, there are even a few women play-by-play -play broadcasters. Mm -hmm. But I, I, would, I would like to go back if you don't mind, Neil, to something really important about the locker room story. Please. I mean, remember, Robin, Robin, as Melissa said, was incredibly courageous and bold. I think that's another aspect of Robin's personality that I remember sort of in, in all facets of her life. She was bold. She would say what she thought. She would do what she wanted to do. She decided at one point in the 80s to go take uh, dance lessons to learn the hustle because she heard or I guess it was the late 70s, because I know it was before she met Paul. Anyway, she just did what she wanted to do. and But on the locker room front, I feel that there are lots of people out there who misunderstand why you had to be in the locker room and who think that it was some sort of a blow you were striking for women's lib and for equality, which it was. But the other thing that's lost in the time in the history is that morning newspapers were hugely important then. The New York Daily News where I worked had a circulation of over a million people every day. It was the largest circulation paper in the country. The New York Times was the New York Times. When they assigned me and Robin to cover the Rangers, Robin did it for two years before I did too, covering the Islanders, they expected their readers to get a story that was gonna be every bit as good as anybody else's story. The only way you could do that for morning newspaper deadlines, whether you were male or female, was to capture the player's comments and thoughts immediately after the game. The only way you could do that was to go in the locker room. As Melissa rightly says, they could have said to the players, stay dressed until all the reporters are done, or come out to an interview room until the reporters are done, or in the, <laughs> the title of a documentary that was made about all of us, let them wear towels. Let them wear towels, yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, if it doesn't bother, it's not going to bother me. So ju I just want to do my job. That's the only thing I want to do. And I don't want to pick up the paper the next day and find that the guy at the New York Post has a comment, a reaction, a fight between players, something I missed because I of wasn't. Course. Right. Of course. So, so it's really important that that's where the equality comes in. And often people don't understand. They say, why didn't you just wait out? outside the door and let the players come out and talk to you. Because if you did that, you were not going to do as good a job as the next person. And maybe uh, the paper would say, we don't want women sports writers. They can't do the job. Absolutely. I want to uh, bring in a couple of comments. Melissa, uh, if you don't mind, we have a number of people watching. I just want to share some of the comments that people have shared uh, with us. Ralph Blumenthal uh, mentions that among her uh, accomplishments, uh, she was a great painter. I know you have a painting of hers uh, right there uh, that we want to share. And we shared some in the slideshow at the beginning uh, of the of this tribute as well. But thank you for for holding that up. Um, and uh, um, and and uh, Bagamary, I might be pronouncing it wrong. My apologies. Uh, Legends uh, is her comment. Um, and um, Rose Hor Horowitz. Um, uh, says Robin was one of the best hockey sports writers in that time. She Carol, um, uh, and she pointed out, do I see one of those uh, paintings? Uh, yes, a great writer uh, and an amazing uh, watercolorist. Uh, Tina uh, is saying, I feel so lucky to have one of her paintings. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Uh, Rose uh, called her, uh, repeated your word gutsy uh, as well. Um, and uh one uh, one uh, comment, Rahadian, uh, the many women in journalism met, I met during my time at the New York Times was important and inspiring. Uh, his goddaughter, uh, Kayla, is now seven, and since she, she was born, wanted to instill an attitude that she can do anything to which she sets her mind, and he's grateful for the uh, trailblazers. Um, and, and Carol is backing you up, Lori, in terms of it was necessary to do her job, and I certainly agree. Uh, that's you know where you got the story, where you got the, the quotes. Um, you know, it was, it was, there's just no question if you're a sports writer, you had to be in the, in the locker room. That was, uh, that's just where you, you had to be. Melissa, you wanted to jump in. Please. Neil, it's so interesting. You say that 
There was no question. If you were a sports writer, you had to be in the locker room. No, 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 no. There was a big question about whether we could be in that locker room. That's mm -hmm. what Lori fought. That's what Rossi fought. There was a huge question. And for think about two years, Robin was one, the best sports, best coverage of the NHL. And she did it outside of that locker room. Yes. She and did it standing outside where, you know, she would watch. And again, remember, we didn't have the cell phones with text. She'd watch a man disappear into the locker room with the promise to bring out a player. And meanwhile, those minutes tick by. Boop, boop, boop. She had 25 minutes in which to gather all the quotes and to get that story filed and sent to her news desk after most games ended. And she's standing outside that locker room and waiting to see if that one player will come out and be kind enough to give her a few words that she can get into her story. Imagine trying to do that kind of coverage with that kind of pressure on you every single night. And just because you're a woman and because a man refuses to put a bathrobe on or a towel, you are kept outside. So it's so interesting that you are able to say that with such a, a, a kind of just, a, of course, that would happen. There would be no question. There was a huge question. And um, it was a question that was asked because we weren't considered to be just sports writers. We were considered to be invaders, invaders of a place that was designed for men. You know, the rules were created for men. So they wanted to keep us out, not just because we were women, but because we were women invading a sport that was only designed for men. Sure. And and to clarify, of course, I wasn't commenting on the time. I was yeah. commenting on my right, right, you know, right. kind of my perspective in 2022. To me, it's a yeah. no-brainer. Uh, right. Today, it should be a no-brainer for anyone. Of course, at the time, it was a huge struggle and a huge issue. The fact that she could do her job from outside the locker room is even you know, more kudos to the work yeah. that she's doing. Lori. Because Lori wants. Yeah. Lori. Yeah. Well, and I also wanted, I, I wanted to say that that was amazing that she continued to do it outside. And we both had to do it outside of locker rooms for the other teams that we covered. So that brings me to another important point. One of the most fortunate things that ever happened to me in my career was that when the daily news assigned me to the Rangers, the Times had just switched Robin from the Islanders to the Rangers. And you would think, you know, being competitors and all that might be awkward, but Robin just made me welcome. Robin showed me the ropes. Robin introduced me to people that I might need to know. Robin told me the best way to get from the press boxes, which are all often way up high in a stadium, to the locker room quickly because we were always on such tight deadlines, things like that. And the other fortunate thing that happened was that the general manager and coach of the Rangers at that time, a man named John Ferguson, who was kind of a notorious tough guy in his playing days, but he was progressive in many other ways. Mm -hmm. And he realized that Robin was writing for the New York Times and I was writing for the New York Daily News. And he told his players at the start of that season, which was the fall of 1976, that they were to treat us like any other reporter and that we would have access to the locker room. Now, this was important, obviously, because they were the main team we were covering. They were the players we had to get to know best. And those were the players we had to travel with on buses and on planes and sit within practice facilities and talk to after games and between games. So that was a big, big plus that we could do that. But everywhere else we went, we had to talk to the general manager, talk to the coach. It, I remember Robin had written a profile of a player named Tom Lysiak for the Atlanta Flames. She, he was the captain of their team. She persuaded Tom to talk to his teammates and his management and get us into that locker room. So everywhere we went, we we talked together. How can we get this team to, you know, open up the locker room and let us do our jobs. Sure. Uh, Robin was a great, Robin had all the other things we've said, courage, passion, and uh, skill, but she was also very well organized and very strategic. And we would sit down together and figure out how to approach the next coming weeks of the season to get this done. Sure. I, I want to bring in a few more viewer comments. Uh, Carla uh, Barnakis, who helped organize uh, today's tribute. Uh, Robin had a sparkling personality that along with her courage is what made her such a perfect person to be a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. uh, Carla is one of the producers for our 
uh, Sunday New York Times read along. Thank you so much, Carla, for um, you know arranging for Melissa and uh, Lori to join us. Um, Anne uh, shares an important thing to mention that Paul and Robin really shared each other's successes completely. They came to Paris for his job at the uh, at the International Herald Tribune. Uh, they went to Boston for hers and uh, at Harvard. Uh, they were wonderful partners, inspiring. Um, Carol uh, shares a, a longer comment, uh, so we want to uh, make a little bit more room for that. I uh, love hearing details of her career. Uh, our friendship developed post-retirement. I knew her background, of course, but experienced her primarily as a fantastic, thoughtful, generous, and hilarious friend and partner in crime on our travels together. Our fly fishing trip to Montana, legendarily hilarious. She was the total package and so much fun. Um, Paul Hewitt uh, also uh, wrote in, um, again, a, a longer column, but we want to make sure that uh, people can see it. I grew up in the same town as Robin, Port Washington, Long Island. Uh, she recruited me for the school newspaper and assigned me um, to write several articles. They reconnected on Facebook. She commented on his posts, um, and uh, it was uh, it got the shocking news that she had uh, passed. Uh, and he says she is sorely missed. Uh, to know her was to admire her. Uh, Bill Keller is watching as well. Um, of course, uh, uh, longtime uh, New York Times uh, uh, writer and editor. Robin was our graduation speaker at Schreiber High School. She urged us all to do our own thing. That is how she lived her life. Her classmates grieve, but will forever be inspired by her. Uh, incredible, incredible comments. Uh, Ellen uh, Landsberger, those of us who grew up with Robin in Port Washington were in awe of her writing and great abilities. A fierce uh, feminist, we were not surprised that she was a trailblazer for women in journalism. Uh, as a reminder, we are uh, streaming this live in addition to Sri's um, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and our DigiMentors website. Uh, we're also live on both Lori and uh, Melissa's um, uh, Facebook pages. Uh, so folks who are watching there, thank you for joining us. And with Paul's uh, blessing and support, we're also streaming this to Robin's Facebook page uh, so that all of her friends uh, can watch as well. So we are deeply uh, touched and uh, really appreciate um, everyone coming together uh, for this. Um, Paul actually uh, shared um, this. This was from uh, the tweet that we shared uh, earlier. Uh, that uh, when he first noticed her in the newsroom. Um, and uh, we have this from Anne, who was also watching the show. Um, she started with uh, Paul's comment, allow me to introduce myself. I'm the man who accompanied Robin to Paris. Uh, and she said to Robin, um, your reputation preceded you. I was in awe of you before we even met. Then we became friends. I was in greater awe of you. I wish we had just one more lunch at MA France or dinner in Lexington, uh, but we'll always have Paris. Um, so many people wrote in to share their uh, remembrances and their thoughts. Anne and Charles mostly uh, knew her from uh, Paris uh, where she raised uh, two young children. She wrote an article about uh, giving, uh, raising a child, giving birth in Paris, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they go on, it made us treasure our adopted city all the more. She and Paul came back as often as they could after they moved and even after Robin became ill. Um, we had hoped for more get-togethers, but it was not to be. Um, Ileana Limon Romero, the board chair for Association for Women in Sports Media, uh, said that uh, AWSM celebrates the life and legacy of the 2015 Mary Garber Pioneer Award winner, Robin Herman. Uh, she acknowledges she was first woman to interview athletes in a North American pro sports locker room. We all have careers in sports uh, media because she was determined and fearless. Thank you, Robin. Um, and then this is a, a longer piece. Um, I'll jump ahead. This is from uh, Lisa R uh, Romeo, or Romeo, author of Starting with Goodbye. Um, and this is a, a long piece where she uh, went on a field trip to the New York Times and during the tour, snuck off, uh, found the sports desk and uh, Red Smith pointed her out to Robin Herman. Um, she recognized the name and but only saw a young woman and she was surprised. Um, uh, if she asked, where is he? And no, she's right there. Um, she was embarrassed that she didn't know Robin was a, a woman. 
Um, but it was really, uh, really interesting uh, to share that anecdote. Um, and then this one, I think this is really worth, uh, worth sharing. This is from uh, Arthur Pincus. Um, and he said the tributes paid to Robin, you know, obituaries and postings got him thinking of the lasting difference. We talked about this earlier, the legacy that she left. And so he goes on. Um, I want to salute Robin by listing some of the names who made the New York Times sports section so different, so much better in my time there and beyond. And then he goes on to share uh, some of the, the great reporters. Um, I uh, had a chance to, to interview Claire Smith on the Sunday New York Times read along, uh, which is an incredible uh, honor. Uh, of course, Melissa and Lori are both on this list. I'm sure I miss so many, partly because there are now so, uh, because, partly because there are now so many. Uh, Arthur Pincus, former editor at New York Times and, and Washington uh, Post. Um, uh, Melissa, please, please. Yeah, I'm only on that list. Uh, I, I'm kind of a fake there because I actually never was uh, hired by the New York Times. But I want to give a big shout out to Leanne Shriver, who was the uh, first woman sports editor of the New York Times. And the only reason I think I was in the New York Times is because Leanne reached out to me during my locker room travails and asked me to write an op-ed which I did, and she put it very prominently in the Sunday New York Times. So I want to give a big thank you to Leanne, who um, you know, was watching her incredible writers, Lori and um, Robin, and um, letting me kind of come in on their coattails and have a moment to express some of what I thought about the, the uh, craziness, what Robin would refer to in one of her blog posts is the media hilarity and hysteria that came up about locker rooms. And Leanne gave me the space to really once again, as Robin had did before, reminded people that this was a struggle about equal rights and not about naked men in locker rooms. So I wanna just uh, say thank you to her and thank you for Arthur for uh, sort of uh, putting me on that list in, in a somewhat fake way, but it's grand company. Absolutely. Uh, Neil. Please, Laurie, please. Uh, just, just to add a historical amendment, because I was a history major in college, and I'd like to make sure we get the chronologies right. Leanne Schreiber was no longer the sports editor when I worked at the time. Oh, so unfortunately, right. I was not one of her. But I do want to give a shout out uh, for a man, Joe Vecchione, yes. who hired me away from the New York Daily News and also hired a number of other of the women you see on this list or promoted them. So along the way, we've had plenty of male support from from uh, from some colleagues, not all, but uh, there are important ones who should be recognized like Arthur Pincus and certainly Joe Vecchione. Sure. Uh, Janet uh, shares a, a comment as well. Um, she, uh, she said, uh, Robin had an unfaltering, deeply wise and loving presence. Her ability to go to difficult spaces was a unique gift, um, uh, forever an inspiration, forever in our hearts. Um, and uh, Carla says that Joe actually hired her, uh, hired Carla as well. That huh? uh, he was a, yeah. a prince. So that was uh, that was really great. Um, just so many great tributes that that came in. And, and when you look on social media, if you see the statements from the NHL and uh, you know from others, uh, what uh, what an incredible life, what an incredible legacy. But again, I go back to Paul's Twitter thread that she mm -hmm. was so much more than just um, you know that one moment, if you will, or that one, you know, that's, that leads the, the obits. Uh, but she had such a, uh, broad ranging, wide ranging career. Uh, and then to, you know, follow up with the, uh, artwork, uh, just in, incredible. Um, really, really great. Um, Neil, let's pay tribute to her before we go also as a mother, because Please. she was both gutsy, bold, and courageous as so, and I would like to refer to as a mama bear, uh, Robin and I, ha I had the um, great honor of uh, having a deep and wonderful friendship with her um, in our uh, later years, uh, not so much during the 70s because we covered different sports. But we both also in that time, um, maybe not surprisingly, shared the role of being an adoptive parent. And we, um, I just felt very fortunate to have her in my life to be able to sit down over a coffee and uh, breakfast and and talk about what it was like to be a mom and to raise children who are adopted. And I want to particularly give a shout out to the uh, 
the fact that uh, she raised um, two children, both of whom she uh, spoke about and wrote about as having um, issues uh, that devolved from uh, mental health issues. And she was a mama bear. She fought for them. And then she broadened her fight as, as, as she would do in every realm of her life to fighting for all children and the um, ability for them to have the care they need for uh, their mental health issues. We've become much more familiar just in the last year in sports about athletes talking about mental health issues. She was once again prescient and a pathfinder in talking out loud about the need for us to talk out loud about mental health issues and to deal with them as we deal with all of health issues. So that was just such a part of her life. And I wanna be sure that people recognize that her gutsiness um, went on and on and on throughout her entire life. And Melissa, you know, in Paul's Twitter thread, tribute to Robin, which Neil mentioned earlier, and, and I also encourage people to check it out. He included a link to an article that Robin wrote for the Princeton Alumni Magazine yep. that he said was probably the most important article she ever wrote. And it's about exactly what you just described, Melissa. Yep. And it's powerfully written and a, a beautiful thing to read. Absolutely. Thanks I, for a reminder on that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely want to uh, share that uh, and put that. We, we sh were showing some pictures of Robin and her family. Uh, you mentioned her her kids. Uh, but here is the article that you, you talked about. Um, what we didn't say, a struggle parenting children with mental illness is finally shared. Um, and she wrote this uh, for the uh, Princeton Alumni Weekly, uh, Robin Herman, class of 73. Um, so definitely uh, thank you for... Yeah, it's as brilliant as everything, as almost everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, her kids, uh, Carl is telling me her kids' names were Zach, are Zach and uh, Eva. Eva. Yep. Um, so that's really, uh, really great. Um, you know, we have a, a couple more comments that have come in, and, and I just want to uh, thank people for watching uh, and uh, acknowledge uh, Stephen um, says, uh, knowing Robin for well over half a century, uh, the thing that uh, I remember most is that she was a kind, wonderful, caring person and a great friend in all spheres of her life. Um, Robin Krasny uh, wrote, one of my um, uh, favorite memories was trailing around her at the last U.S. Open final in uh, at Forest Hills in 77, won by Guillermo v uh, Vilas. Uh, the place was a mob scene as an era ended. She pushed through. Mm -hmm. um, Carol, uh, deserving of every accolade, just an amazing human being, we are lucky uh, to know her. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, we're we're thrilled that uh, and, and Anne actually uh, shares. She was a member of the first class of women uh, to be admitted to Princeton as undergrads. Uh, and and if when we were talking earlier, um, we were talking about that earlier, uh, Lori. That was something uh, at that era. It was a class of sixty nine, uh, entering class of sixty nine, was it or? It was a class of seventy three that entered class in seventy three. Yeah, and and you uh, you were also uh, in I was that in same the, year. Yes, at, I was in that class at Yale, and Robin was in that class at Princeton. Yeah, so that's and just people, uh, that that's another thing that is so long ago people don't realize it, but back then only two of the eight Ivy League universities accepted women. Only two of the eight yeah. until the until nineteen sixty nine. Yeah. And, and in fact, when she went to write for the Princetonian, uh, she had to fight even back then to be able to cover sports, mm -hmm. right? Uh, typically they give everyone two beats, uh, something in sports, but they didn't give sports assignments to, to women. Um, well, so they really, did once Robin asked them to. Once Robin asked her to, exactly. Um, David K. Johnston uh, is saying, good to see Melissa, another sports coverage pioneer hey, um, and uh, David was a guest on our show uh, just a few weeks ago. Thank you, David, for, for tuning into this. Uh, and Deborah uh, Smith shares, um, Robin was a beloved member and co-founder of our All Princeton Alumni Book Group, which she co-founded with Ellen uh, Porter Honnett, also the class of 73 on her return from Paris. So a lot of Princeton ties there. Um, any any uh, final words? I know that we we wanted to make sure we didn't go too long this morning. 
uh, we want to uh, definitely do her, um, do Robin right. Um, any final thoughts, uh, uh, Lori or Melissa? I just want uh, Paul and Eva and Zach to know that uh, we feel very lucky that they shared her with us. Um, they um, they had um, just an amazing uh, wife and uh, and mother in their life, and uh, we felt I felt uh, very privileged to have the time I did um, as her friend. We were uh, she, Robin and I were roommates at a, a sports writers conference. Um, Oh my God, maybe about uh, a decade ago now. And uh, we just had the best time that weekend. I thought, oh my God, if they have this kind of fun at home, I, I want to be there. So um, we're thinking of Paul and I'm, you know, certainly Zach and Eva and um, sending our love to them and um, hoping that, um, you know, our words are of, of some comfort and uh, certainly our love for Robin um, is, uh, is there with you. Absolutely. Liz shares such a beautiful tribute. Thank you, Melissa, Lori, and Lori and Carla. Uh, and of course, thank you, Robin. Um, Neil, Lori, Liz, your thoughts? Liz, Liz is another of the inheritors of Robin's legacy. Liz was also a sports writer at the Times. Um, and I, I would agree with everything Melissa said. I, I didn't know Robin as well later in, well, I knew her, but I wasn't as close friends later in her life as Melissa was. I feel that it's important to say even though she's going to be remembered for being a pioneer and for very good reason, that was just a small portion of her mm -hmm. career and her life. Mm -hmm. She lived her whole life with that same um, can-do, enthusiastic, brave spirit. And she did a lot of, uh, she accomplished a lot of other things in her later career, which we aren't having time to talk about now, but which she should be remembered for and admired for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Gary H says, thank you, Lori and Melissa. Beautiful conversation. Uh, Anne says, uh, merci beaucoup. Uh, honored to have been here for this amazing tribute to an amazing woman. Um, I will not uh, um, try the French uh, uh, on you, but obviously she's saying uh, goodbye, my friend. Uh, Liz uh, wrote on uh, her on Carla's page because of Robin and Melissa and Lori. I found the NHL to be one of the most female-friendly locker rooms mm -hmm. when I started covering the sport in 1993. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning for the St. Pete Times. Then covered the NBA for seven years for the New York Times. Couldn't have done it without you three. You are all my heroes. Um, and Helen says beautiful tribute for those of us who knew Robin growing up in Port Washington. We are grateful for her friendship. Um, as, uh, we mentioned, this is a tribute, uh, that our New York times read along team, uh, organized for Robin Herman, uh, usually on Sunday mornings at eight 30, uh, we do the Sheree Sunday New York times read along where we look at the newspaper and interview, uh, guests, uh, you know, from the times and from elsewhere. Um, and today after today's show with Dean O'Connor, uh, we want to do this special tribute for Robin. Um, what I'd, I'll do is I'll close uh, again. If people uh, didn't get a chance to see the beautiful pictures that we have of Robin, uh, some sent by Paul, uh, some family photos that were sent from uh, by him that weren't shared on social media. Uh, and we'll uh, close out um, looking at these pictures together, if that's, uh, that's okay uh, with folks. And if people still have comments, we will uh, uh, share them on the screen. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, and it's wonderful to be with Lori again, too. <laughs> you too. It's 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 what you want to do. Uh, you know, when when someone passes away, this is a way. I mean, honoring their memory. Um, you want to do it in community. You want to do it with people. Um, and in this case, you know, obviously, you're getting to do this with people who knew her and admired her and loved her, but you're also bringing her story to a larger audience. Yeah. Um, and that's, um, that's special as well. And these are those family pictures again. Her Princeton, <laughs> Princeton reunion picture. In Iceland and then her artwork. Such great artwork. 
and the picture with Robin and Paul. Uh, and I think uh, we will certainly uh, close, uh, close with that. So again, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you joined us late, uh, as soon as the show is over, uh, you can watch it from the beginning uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, YouTube, on our DigiMentors website. If you're watching on Robin's Facebook page, again, thank you for joining us uh, and Melissa and uh, Lori's Facebook and Twitter accounts as well. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. We'll close with this picture of Robin and Paul. <laughs>